All right, Ben today is Wednesday. It's September 21st. Welcome to the Dog Walk presented by Barstool Sports. It is myself. It's Danny and Tana. How are you guys today? Excellent. Okay. Yeah, pretty good. Good weekend. <laughs> I'm good. Are, are you doing okay from your eye exam yesterday? Yeah. Uh, uh, thank you, everybody, for the concern. You're welcome. Um, no, it was just a standard. I, so I had LASIK five years ago, actually. And uh, I think five years ago. Four, maybe. And I need to do a yearly exam because that's the only way the insurance covered, like the, like the lifetime touch-ups. Mm-hmm. Like in case I need to go there, it's like if I'm, my vision's getting worse, they'll just zap me up and get me going again. Um, so I needed to do that. Have you ever got it done again? No, no, no. So your vision just stayed the same? Correct. But if you don't get the like the yearly check-ins and they're like, they won't honor the lifetime insurance. What if you like were sick with COVID once? Well... It's funny you should bring that up, Hannah. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, I called them and I was like, hey, can I get the fax number? I'm trying to send over my thing. They're like, oh, actually, we don't do that anymore. Like, you don't have to worry about getting the exam because once COVID happened, uh, like, it was hard for people to get appointments. So we just stopped making people send us yearly exams. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, thanks. You should probably send like an email and let yeah. people know that you don't need to do this anymore. So they just check the yearly exam every year to see if you need LASIK again? Yeah, I think it's more like they like want to make sure you're like staying on top of it and like there actually is a like a regression into your vision that they need to touch up. What? You know? How do you like prevent that? What do you mean? Is this all just kind of like a scam? Essentially, you always have to get LASIK more more and more times. No, 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 no. I've I've had contacts for three years. My eyes have gotten worse every year. Really? Yeah. What? So I'd be getting LASIK back to back to back years. No, 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 no. I don't think that's how it works. But it's gotta. So like, say like my prescription's like plus four seventy five, pretty bad. So if yours changes and goes up to five, that's very bad. Yeah, and it goes up to five, then you obviously need to get LASIK again. It's like getting new contacts, getting a new prescription. Yeah, I just don't know if the progression happens. I, like it typically doesn't happen like that. To my, I believe. But even wouldn't like a plus two five, That's even me. a little change like that, be enough to constitute getting LASIK again? I don't, I don't know. know. I think that's up to the person or it's up to their discretion. Also, gotcha. well, I have astigmatism. I heard you can't get LASIK. You have to get a certain type of LASIK with astigmatism. But my theory is I think I'm getting better at guessing the letters every year oh okay and then i just my stigmatism gets worse and my like vision gets better but it's pretty easy to guess at this point you're like nick miller from new girl he says he's uh not convinced that he can read he just memorized a lot of words (laughs) yeah pretty much but no they change it It, it, it's not always the capital e on top they're on to people like you it's not it's not not though i mean and like the you gotta redo rows you gotta redo uh, like rows and stuff so true yeah, yeah I don't know row, it could be mental I don't know maybe that bottom row is tricky for anyone maybe um, before we continue I do want to talk about the exclusive ticketing partner of Barstool Sports that's Game Time uh, this app was created by fans for fans uh, Game Time is a new ticketing app that makes it easier than ever to score last minute deals on tickets to sports concerts and shows and they guarantee the lowest price if you haven't given the Game Time app a shot yet I don't know what you're waiting for you guys are going to love the app uh, we've had tons of Barstool fans using it. Just hit us up on social, and uh, you'll see the great deals they're getting. So, um, I uh, i mean, we've used it a bunch this year. The 49ers-Bears game, uh, went to a Cubs-Sox game earlier mm-hmm. in the year, uh, Alton John. I don't know. You guys use it at all? Yeah. Right fast. I right. texted oh, you. Let's go. Helena, how was it? So good. Gu- yeah. S- guys, so good. Oh, My dude, Chemical Romance is amazing. So worth it. What they what they open with? You remember? Had to be either I, Helena. I, I'm not okay. No, I think she's a it's, casual. She's a black parade. And wow. yeah, no, Helena. no, no. Um, <laughs> famous last words. I think. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. it was good. And then second was like Nana, and then it was just so good, guys. I almost like blacked out how good it was. I mean, a lot of people actually were passing out, which is really dangerous. But that's messed up. People forget the lead singer of My Chemical Romance's first cousins with Joe Rogan. Really? What? Yeah. That is a fun fact. They didn't really know each other that well, though. Oh, really? But it's it's a fact. That's like a crazy connection. Well, they were amazing. They were like one of my favorites ever. Good. 
Well, uh, it's easy to use, amazing deals, and uh, it's the fastest growing ticketing app in the U.S. You're going to love it. Download the Game Time app, go to the account tab to create a login and redeem code DOGWALK for $20 off your first purchase. Terms do apply. Download Game Time, last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Okay, everybody. Um, I know we the first thing technically we got to was LASIK, but the first thing we really actually have to get to, though, is Sunday night. Oh my God. We watched the Bears game at Barstool River North, and our friend Hannah in the middle here uh, lit her hair on fire. <clears throat> I I don't even know what to say. It's true. And I think we're going to roll the video. We have the footage. We pulled it from the security cameras. Essentially, long story short, <laughs> I, we were sitting at a table, and Hannah walked up. She crouched over to say something to me, and you were Danny was sitting next to me, and we just at one point realized that her hair was legit burning. I'll give my my version of the events here because I'm in a way, we'll get to this, I'm kind of a third party in this situation. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the Bears just had a good drive. So I'm looking down on my phone waiting for like the highlight clip to come out on Twitter. And by the time I look up, <clears throat> Hannah's hair is already being put out by a, a, a friend of mine who happens to be a fireman, ironically enough. But the thing here is that Eddie is, Tom had a good joke saying once the surveillance footage releases, Eddie's going to be like Jim Helpert in the office. So Michael <laughs> Scott fell in the koi pond and they're going to see that Eddie should have put it out. The thing was, this this was probably like six seconds total, would you say? Like if so, less. Less, dude. So, less. Like, okay, maybe maybe five. Maybe, so, maybe. But Hannah was leaned over and unbeknownst to her, her hair was in the candle the whole time. So there was like a split two seconds where all of us were like, hey, hey, like trying to let yeah, you know yeah. that your hair was on fire, but you just didn't know. It was only Chief. It was only Chief. No, no, You no. panicked. You panicked, Ed, and I don't trust you ever. <laughs> oh, no, come on. All right, I'm literally you doing- You back up. You literally back up. All right, I'm doing the- All right, we're going to roll the video. And, and laugh. You start I'm, laughing. I'm looking at the time, okay? I'm going to see how long. All right, it 40 seconds. It starts at like 14 seconds. 40, oh, well, hold on. This is. But mind you, her hair was on fire, like still in the candle before it, she backed away. It burnt my chin and that's when I really noticed. All right. It's legitimately from when she walks up to by the time the fire is put out, it is eight seconds. Okay. 26 to 32 in this video. Eight seconds. I think, like I was saying, the Ugh. thing was that like no one thought they needed to put your hair out because we were trying to get you to notice that your head was literally in flames, but it just took longer. Than <laughs> That's like bystander bias or whatever. It's like if you see a crime being committed and you just assume because other people are there to help and you don't help, does that make you a bad guy? That makes no. you a bad guy. You're a bad guy. No, no, no. I'm not a bad guy. Listen, can I defend myself? I was in a position... I was in the worst position to help. Danny was too. Danny was in the worst. And then we talked about I was this. behind the table. I would have had a bypass You chief. were in front of me. You, you literally were a hand away. Now, the only thing I could, and then there were two Chicago firemen, legit, mm -hmm. legit sworn in firemen just by chance at our table. And one of them just springed up and he- I put it out. I put it out. Yeah, he tried though. But like he was just like yeah, he, he was pretty quick. First. He was pretty quick. What did, did you did your hand burn? Like how did you? My chin burned a little, and then I saw all the fire <laughs> next to my face, and I just took my hand and just went through it, <laughs> and I was just. So we. I looked at you first, and you were backed up with your hat in front of your face. That's like what you was saw tough. You you did back up, and you put your hands up. <laughs> that's tough. Also. Hannah, like when her hair was in the fire, it was like Sorry. it was like lighting a firecracker. Like it just the wick just went up and up. For that those at home, you'll see the video if you're watching on YouTube. But this went all the way up to like her eyebrow. Like it was it about to hit cheek. her scalp. Oh, dude, it engulfed. Yeah. yeah. Like okay. 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 Well, Whew. it's more embarrassing. I don't. I didn't have any product in or anything. My hair, and I'm supposed to get a haircut this week, is so dead and dry. That was like putting hay to flames, and I just started like a forest fire on my head. Yeah. I just can't believe you backed up I, and then immediately <laughs> started gotta, giggling and then looking around. No, no, no. Not I, even owning the laugh like Chief. Chief was funny. At least he said, Hannah, your hair on fire. And then started no. laughing. You backed up. No, no. I backed up once the fire was out and I knew everything was safe. That's not me. Not. I backed up because I was, I was like, whew. Like, you know, like. You're relieved. You're relieved. Well, yeah. I was, I literally, our conversation lit your hair on fire. 
it's literally selfish. I don't even know what you were saying. It was, dude, it was so <laughs> crazy. And it smelled so bad. Yes, that was the worst part. Like, Why does your hair smell so bad? It's when you burn hair, <laughs> no, it doesn't smell good. No. It's a thing. Bartenders came up and they're like, who burnt their hair? It smells like burnt hair hair i don't know I i'll smelled, burn your hair i smelled burnt hair before Yours eddie, was, eddie's just gaslighting you if you even if you burn your leg hair it smells like shit for yeah a remember good 10 this minutes. this was extra funky though dude oh she, well it was a head of hair it whoa it was so much hair she, i'm like, not wearing a wig she like definitely riot fest sweat like for two days and just walked into the bar it was just all split ends and, well yeah she's saying hair. one of the one of the sneaky reasons she's so embarrassed is of how fast her hair caught on fire because of the dryness mm. of it <laughs> The laughing. <laughs> it was, it I, was unreal. I dude. gotta say, like last week, we're talking about one of the most embarrassing to do things to do in public uh, is is choke, stop, drop, and roll. I mean, if you're Imagine. there, there was one point, <laughs> one Mississippi where Hannah didn't realize her hair was on fire yet, and I just looked at her. There's a flame on the side of her head, and her is going <laughs> what? <laughs> it was if I didn't feel it on my cheek, like the flame on my bare skin, I wouldn't have like noticed because it's like in your blind spot. Um, right. What was our faces like? You behind a hat, hidden, <laughs> scared, and but like, like initially, getting embarrassed for me. Initially, like. like don't get me wrong, you felt it, but you also saw us be like, oh my god. Um, it yeah, was and mostly she was, chief, and she was like, why are you doing that? Uh, you were like fight, flight, or freeze, or freeze. And so you gave no emotion except for like, <laughs> almost like disgust for the moment. <laughs> like you were embarrassed that that happened. Uh, Chief's kind of getting away with a lot here. Chief didn't have He was a, the first to say it though. He's he, the first to warn me and kind of like wave away. Exactly. And he didn't have a table in front of him. So he could have easily That's just- That's what I'm saying. I was blocked easy, in. I was same. boxed in. I was in the corner between two people. Okay, he, yeah. He could have easily were, got up. You, and you were I'm on your phone. Clear. You were on the phone. We watched the video three times. Eddie, I just don't get it. You let me down. I didn't know it. I, listen, I'm not equipped to- for, Like, all right, if you want- I'm, I'm not cut out for the Chicago Fire Department, Okay. Like, I, like that's. Do you say Eddie should have warned you even beforehand not to get too close to the candle in front of him? I just feel like the whole stun doesn't say any warning and then backs up to protect himself did not help. I backed up to get rid of the smell. Like it was just. That's even worse. <laughs> he was already worried about the smell while you were still on fire. Just like disgusted, purely just like. Mm. That was fucking nuts. What if I had to stop, drop, and roll? I was thinking about that. It is like Would you humiliating. Have been I would have just dumped the flu shoes on my head. Yeah, that's see, that's the only thing I could have done is just threw a drink in your face. That's what I said. But like, if I throw a drink in your face, I feel like you'll never let me live that down as long as I know you. And there's alcohol in it. It would have been like a fucking grill fire. Yes. Putting water on a grill fire. I don't know, guys. There was a lot of other liquids in it. Can't release a secret formula, but like, that was you could have done real. more. I just want to say you could have done more. Just remember this. I, I couldn't have done more. I could have reacted better. Hair How about on, that? Your hair on fire, that's sort of a solo mission. Like if your hair catches on fire, but if like your jacket caught on fire, then it's a team effort. Everyone around you team is effort. I feel like you could take that in off. so that I you don't burn alive. I can't take my hair off. You can't take your hair off. In hindsight, though, you're probably happy we didn't do anything because it was so, it went out fast. Like I imagine guess. if your hair burned on fire, you smelled bad, and you were all wet from a, a floose <laughs> juice. Like then you're like, it's like your getting tarred and feathered. Yes, exactly. Your <laughs> yeah, day's I guess. ruined. Your day's ruined. I mean, it, oh God. I mean, what if you got like seriously burned? What if I had a bald spot? What if it burned my like lashes, and eyebrows, and like just like a bald spot? I'm saying, how bad would you feel? The eyebrow, dude. I feel like everyone is so different of how your eyebrows grow back. They you never know? grow back the yeah. same. If you if you weren't scarred and you just get your eyebrow burned off, I don't think I would have felt bad. I put like, Eddie, Eddie, Eddie. Because that would have been a good content, right? Eyebrow burn off is almost a scar in the sense that it might never return. It probably the same will. Again. And I'm Asian. I got really? very few hairs. I had to fill this in. I can't afford to burn and like never grow back hair there. No, yeah. Like I would assume you would grow back hair. I don't want your eyebrow gone forever. Assuming makes an ass out of you and me. At that moment, Ooh. you assumed I'd be okay. Luckily I, for I, me. I was stunned. I was, it was, I mean, people watching on YouTube, like the footage was. Yeah, you were, you were Mrs. O'Leary. You just watched the cow <laughs> kick over the, 
<laughs> I'm so happy the footage Fucking does mad. it justice too. Good angle, good yes. angle. Mm-hmm. And like you really see the flame. Yeah. Like oh, you, it burns. It's nice. like bright white and yeah. like. It was unreal. And like that was the only touchdown drive the Bears had. So like we kind of we kind of need to. That was my biggest fear. If they won, I was like, I'm gonna lose all my hair. Would you let us burn your hair again? I because I'm gonna get a haircut like in the next few days. So I would collect all the hair. I would ask for in the bag, and we burn locks. But I can't. Ugh. I can't afford to when it's connected to the scalp. No. Set on fire. Okay, that's a fair. We guess. You, you wouldn't do it for the bears. You wouldn't do it for Jim. <laughs> I don't know. They let go of Tonga, and he was like my favorite. I'm very sad about that. Yeah, you got to do it for Jim. I'll do it for Jim, Jim though. Jim the bear. Okay. R.I.P. Uh, but yeah, unreal. Unreal moment at Barstool River North. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, it was, the game sucked. So that was, that was probably the best part. No offense. Yeah. I was like disassociated, just like tr- flash back <laughs> to the flames just now. Oh, humiliating. <laughs> Mostly humiliating. Would you rather get your hair caught on fire again or, or choke? How about the choke? Both instances require strangers to help you. Hair on fire. That is really out of my control. But if you choke and someone has to help you. I give you a Heimlich. Like if Eddie actually got up and gave me the Heimlich, I just fire me at Some, that point. Someone, someone actually reached out to me and they made a good point. They're like, hey, dude, like if you're ever choking like that, like getting up and walking away is how people die. Like you, like, you can't just go hide. Like that's like. Like that's the yes. epitome of, right? You, you took off your hat to hide behind your hat, yeah. as if I couldn't see your eyes <laughs> staring at me in fear. And it makes sense, dude. Getting the Heimlich would be so fucking embarrassing. <laughs> like just, just getting tossed around by another yeah. man in like the middle but, of a restaurant, and then hit on the back and like repeat. But at, at the same time, I think you're probably so relieved. My friend gave someone the Heimlich at Swedish House Mafia. Really? Yeah. She like was choking on a carrot, and he fucking walked. Back. Doing Wait, on a carrot. carrot at Swedish House? Yeah, it was like, you know, they got the, uh, we were in a box, so they have the, uh, oh, God, the platter. I thought like a drug. The vegetable platter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they got the, uh, <laughs> the no, 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 the carrot. I don't know, man. I don't know what you're into. Yeah. What are you trying to say? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what are you trying to say? I don't know. What'd you do at Swedish, Swedish House? Uh, who choked on the carrot? Was it you? It was not me. No. Dude, what did you do actually? If, since you were in the ball, is choking on a carrot a euphemism here? <laughs> I uh, <laughs> I had a hot dog. Uh, I enjoyed a lot of beers, some mixed drinks. Um, I someone might have oh might have put something in one of my drinks, um, and that's you found Molly. That oh. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, so listen. All right, I heard about this. I didn't know if I was allowed to say anything. You could say it. I don't. Care. It's weird because I don't. I don't mind talking about it because I'm not like. Uh, You're not always rolling tits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, I don't want people to think like I don't know. Like I, I don't. I just don't know the severity of this shit. And apparently, it is getting really bad. Where like it's getting cut with certain shit. And like, we, people yeah, are, we don't condone drugs, yes, but we and do. And that's do what them. I'm saying. Like, I don't want people to think that I'm this like, yeah, dude. You know? Yeah. Because I'm not. Eddie doesn't want you to do Molly, but he does do Molly. No, I, I don't. I don't. People know. I've, Molly I've a, I've a, comes to him. I have a well documented past. I've never smoked weed. Yeah, that's so. Like, so I'm, put on a list. Drugs Eddie's done before weed. Steroids, <laughs> Molly. <laughs> Correct. And so this is fucked up. I don't know. Can we even talk about this? I think we can. Whatever. It's funny because, like, yeah, like you're such a, a clean person that you did Molly. That's that has why it's to be funny. talked about. Yes, that's why it's funny. But if it was like Hannah doing Molly, that's another fucking yeah. Saturday. Uh, that's like a, yeah, exactly. that's, like, that's like yeah, yeah that's like yesterday's you have, news. Yeah, you have a Mondays. That they we're going to the pool hall, so we might as well yeah, fucking. It's just like crime in Chicago. Read mother newspapers. Yeah. Don't shame me. Don't shame me. I had a good time. <laughs> it's a great time. <laughs> so how was it? So. What weirdly warmed me up to it more than anything, and here's the thing too, like I'm not, I don't cast judgment on people who, I hate fucking this podcast shit, it's just caveat after caveat, you know, it's just like I just want to talk, but like so many people just like are ready to jump down your throat, and like with the amount of people that listen to the show now, like I do feel like obligated to say everything, like you know, the caveat, the caveat, the caveat, but I fucking- So you're not pro-Molly? No. 
No, I don't know. I'm not. not I'm not anti yeah. though either. You know what I like mean? Like I said, we don't condone drugs, but yeah, we do like do them. Yeah, like if you're like doing this shit, like whatever, like be this safe. This is in the past. Did you have a good time or not? Go do. It. Thank you. Uh, it was fun, but I don't know if I blacked out. I don't know if I did enough. I've done it, and it's honestly just made me very dehydrated and like a little really? high. Yeah. Um, but what I was gonna say though, what weirdly made me more comforted, what more comforted, comforted me more about it, was that it wasn't a pill. Mm. It was like a little little dust in the drink. You're boofing shit. No, <laughs> I don't know. They were like, I don't know. It wasn't you, a press pill. Was it like a capsule and then yeah, like yeah, little yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, brown sugar inside? Yeah, like someone just poured it in. Eddie pulled the the Tato, Chief Keef's guy, off What's Molly Water. Molly yeah. Water. Yeah, that's Perkio. Tato off Molly Water. Yeah, Perkio. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta get Perky on this fucking podcast. Would, would you be down for Perky? I'd be down. The funny I'm thing is, at any content I've ever seen him, and he's like, he looks scared shitless. Like, he just doesn't talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, little Dirks look alike. Shout All right, so you're just a little dehydrated. So, yeah, I just like, uh, I mean, I was definitely seeing lights in ways that I've never seen them before. Mm-hmm. Like, that's for sure. Like, I like at one point, I did get like caught up in the moment, and I was like, damn, that's pretty cool. But then I was just like, all right, like, I don't know what's different it kind of just felt like i was just drunk you yeah know? yeah so like i think i also maybe didn't take enough i don't know it's a slippery slope um it is it is and <laughs> it i really don't like is. i don't have plans to do it again or anything like i don't right. like it, but i'm not against it like did you have plans to do it that night no no so some so at the moment like oops yeah i was pretty the moment and to be clear also this is some good background that was the day after I won Surviving Barstool. There we go. So it was Why like, I it? had just gotten back from living in the office for six days. Like, I'm dead as fuck. I'm My tired. boy needs his molly. <laughs> it's like, it's like, you know what? All right. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to have some fun. Yeah, treat yourself. Good celebration. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, that, that's. Was it the guy who choked on the carrot who gave it to you? No, um, no, it was not him. You don't want to. Did he take molly? You don't want to give up your plug? It was not him. What? Did he take molly? I don't know if he did or not. I'm not sure. Ah, uh, you little rave sure. slave. Yeah, but it's all, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't, what does that mean? Is that a thing? <laughs> yeah, if you like, you know, when people just like go off with like the body suits, like silver bright and the like goggles and the hydration backpack with a binky mm. and the, the light up shoes and yeah, like shuffling. A, a coyote hide on their head. Oh, Always like chewing. Yeah. The hydration backpack. Yeah. That, that'd be so funny if I just became a huge rave guy. Ray Slave. I, I, you know, I always have wanted to go. I told you to the Electric Forest. Yeah. That's kind of fascinating to me. All those people in a campsite just like fucking being fucking zoned out on some dude with the gloves. Like, you wouldn't, you wouldn't survive though. You can't even go did. a couple of days without taking a shower, right? No, I mean, now. it's an, it's a young man's game for sure. But Eddie would rather just uh, not shower for multiple days than jump in a lake. I mean, yeah. Do what you want. I feel like you'd just you be the person dirtier. with the gloves. I feel like... You think I'd be the glove guy? I feel like... That's the most insulting thing I've ever heard. I mean, out of everything. You the guy doing the gloves or the guy just watching yeah. it off? I feel like at one point, like day two, he'd be like, found a pair of gloves and, you know, dabble. And then suddenly take Molly and then be way too into it. Then he'd be entertaining the crowd. I, I do not feel bad for not putting your hair out now. <laughs> for calling me a glove guy. Wow, that that's offensive as fuck. What is it? It's like the Mickey Mouse gloves, but they they do shit with like the lights. They're like attached to. Yeah, but now I understand it. Like I never understood that, but I guess what like the, Molly is just it's a light fucking enhancer. Yeah, right? yeah. I mean, it it's, definitely it's, spills all your dopamine in your brain and stuff. Right. But, uh, yeah. That that's what we should really get to. How was the day after? Well, that's what was fucked up, too, is I had to work the day after because I had that interview with uh, Tom Schumann, um, who wrote the book. I, All I, right. Um, you know, war veteran. He's a Marine. And it was like, I was like, oh, I was freaking out the whole time because I knew I had to work the next day. So Wait, did was, you feel depleted? Like you had no happiness left? Like the Dementors got you? But I didn't know if it, like, to me, it just felt like a hangover. Mm. Like I didn't know how to decipher. He's still rolling. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, sometimes you, I mean... You can get afterglow. I feel like it's like a mental thing. Also, maybe just take some vitamins. Maybe. 
Also, if you are struggling mentally, now a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. It can be tough to train your brain to stay in problem-solving mode when faced with a challenge in life. But when you learn how to find your own solutions, there's no better feeling. A therapist can help you become a better problem solver, making it easier to accomplish your goals, no matter how big or small. Um, yeah, like in all seriousness, though, if you maybe are struggling with something like this and you kind of went too far, uh, it's good to talk to someone and kind of get the help you need. Um, whether it be as far as, you know, the topic we just talked about goes or just really anything in life, uh, therapy could be a good thing for pretty much everybody. So if you're thinking of giving therapy a try, BetterHelp is a great option. It's convenient, accessible, affordable, and entirely online. Get matched with a therapist after filling out a brief survey and switch therapists at any time. When you want to be a better problem solver, therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash walk today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp.com slash walk. Go check it out. Okay. Were you sweating a lot? I had to ask that. Pop to Molly, I'm sweating. Is that is that a thing too? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Really? Yeah. A little. Well, what, oh. Does it mean you're not... All right, well, you're how, not all right, if you're give me your sweat. guys' counts then, fuckers. Hmm. How I'm many times sweating. have you done it? A lot, a <laughs> lot. <laughs> all right. Like a fuck ton. Mm-hmm. But I like the press bills. I like like ecstasy more. Mm-hmm. I like to nibble on it like a rat. <laughs> I don't. I haven't done it in a while. Mm-hmm. I've done it twice in my life. That's it. Yeah, that's what? stunning. I don't. I didn't like it. I just felt very dehydrated the first time. I don't know why. <sighs> you I got did the second time out of boredom. You got to hydrate. That's why they give out like free water to that shit, right? Yeah. I mean, I think that's just because it's free water, but like. Oh, really? Oh, it's the best. It's my favorite drug. I don't think I've ever done it in a place where like you should be doing Molly. I did it at like a college bar <laughs> no. once. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> we were just like hanging out <laughs> on Molly. Yeah. The people who just do it randomly have always been kind of suspect to me. Do they do that though? Yeah. I know people. The people who- like in their like friend's basement just rolling. Yeah, I think people do oh, do no. that shit. I think there is a pop, part of the population that does do you that. You need like something to dance to. Yeah, you need. You, know, um, you can't be watching The Simpsons like I'm Molly. No, you cannot. No, you cannot. All right. Well, you're the fucking yeah. You're the, drug, you're the expert, the drug lord. I mean, man, I just came like candy in, in college. Was it that? It was that prevalent. I mean, now it sounds like I, I do Molly all the time and XC all the time. I don't because I would be very depressed now i haven't done it in a while trying to build up that dopamine blow it up again i mean i've done it a lot my first time was um my first coachella and it was chain smokers the year they dropped roses 2016 i get the chills thinking about that set time my life it's a big one yeah just the lasers you know like the green ones that go like this yeah yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. it's 2016 roses just dropped and you just did molly for the 72nd time (laughs) <laughs> first, 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 and it was ecstasy. But, um, what's the difference? I mean, one's a press pill, and then one's like the capsules. I feel like the high is like, okay, again, I think it's mental, but I like press pills because, like, you know what you're gonna get. You're gonna go up and then, like, kind of hang out and then go down. Like, I feel like Molly's like up and down, up and down. And also, I've seen my friends just like fetal position for a second when they're really coming up. So, hmm. mm-hmm. Martin Garrix, <laughs> not a good time. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's not like I do like acid or anything. I wish that's just like too long. Yeah. 12 hours. <laughs> 12. That's insane. That's how long that is. I'm pretty sure. I've yeah, heard like nine. Tough. That's still, yeah. That's tough. 12 hours. You're barely awake for 12 hours. I know. Yeah. Speaking of drugs, I don't know. That was a good transition. Danny's going to Vegas. First, First time, time, right? Mm-hmm. How do you feel about that? Should be good. I'm excited. Yeah. I don't. I don't think I'm going to be doing drugs out there. But no, you don't know I that. guess you know. Hey, what'd you say? What happens when you assume? What do you have planned? Uh, she won't tell me. It's a, it's a birthday present. Oh. Yeah. I bet he's going to see Martin Garrix. Yeah. See so tape I face. Ne- I didn't even know who that was. So she played one of the songs. I oh, play animals. Garrix. But um. Siegfried, are Siegfried and Roy still playing? That's a good question. Is Carrot Top still out there? I was going to say David <laughs> Blaine, Chris Angel. Oh, he's a Dutch DJ, Martin Garrix. You'll know one of his songs. You here. know his songs. When you meet me in the summer. Pff, eh. That's that Calvin, Calvin Harris. Harris? Yeah. I saw him once at Omnia, so I said that. Oh, big Vegas guy? Um, what are your I, thoughts? I like Vegas a lot. Yeah, how many times have you been? Well, maybe like six, maybe. Mm-hmm. Which is kind of, I mean, I don't know, not a lot. Good. But my first time I went, though, I was 25, so... 
comparatively. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's pretty late. Like, like 26, yeah, pretty late, so. Pretty late for a guy who's already yeah, gone yeah, yeah, six yeah, times. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh-huh. I uh-huh. mean, that's, I mean, you guys live across the country. I forget that, like, our, the fraternity weekenders, you just take a bus up and. Yeah, yeah, that's different. Hope you don't get caught with a fake ID, pretty much. That's where all, like, your formals and shit were, right? I mean, yeah, like, the um, fraternity weekenders, so you would just go up on a bus. It takes, like, maybe six hours. Oh, it's sick. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Where would you guys stay? Hard Rock. Oh, it's always for some reason the Hard Rock. Oh, I think really? they had like a deal or something. Hard Rock's closed now. It's what? something. It's something else now. What? Yeah. Sorry, I had to find out this mm-hmm. way. It's very, um, it's very upset all yeah. of a sudden. But you're staying in like a bougie. You're staying in the Venetian. Yeah, that's a nice one. Give me some guidelines. Give me some how to how to not die. Um. I mean, if you're just going through your girlfriend, I don't think it's going to be like uh, like you're you're not going to need survival tips. Don't wear jeans to the club; you will get turned down. Fair. I mean, that's well, like, you're probably not going to a club, right? He's going to a club. Are you? Probably, yeah. Oh, really? Probably, yeah. Hmm. He's probably going to go to Hawkinson on the 29th. You can't even Marcus. wear like a very dark blue jean. <laughs> I mean, are you so, buying a table? The only time I, I went, I went with Dave, so it's like you could wear whatever you want. Like, oh. It was like, uh, which is which is crazy, you know, because everyone says like, don't do this, don't it's do really that. It's really strict. You need, you need dress shoes. You need this and that. Yeah. Like Frankie was wearing a hat, and I was like, dude, are, can we? What do we gotta wear? And he's like, dude, don't worry about it. He's like, you, when, when you're with him, like it's like anything goes. My, and he's in a tux. My <laughs> thing with my thing with dress codes though is like I'm not worried I'm gonna get kicked out or let in. I'm just gonna look like an asshole, you know, like mm-hmm. wearing it wearing a t-shirt and like a. Or like a hat in like an Italian restaurant, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit like that. So you're like gonna I'm, get Tony Soprano. Yeah, yeah. Oh Take my gosh, you're gonna have off, so much son. fun. There's like it never sleeps. You could have open container on the streets, no clocks in casinos. That's the craziest part to me is how it's just like, but like Miami's like that too. Yeah, it just never ends. It never ends. I, uh, I went up to go bet college basketball the first time I went, and you know, tip off there is at nine a.m. And I was walking to the sports book at like, I don't know, it was like a little before eight and like girls were still in their heels, yep. like just still getting after That's it. lawless. I know. Yes, <clears throat> definitely. Yeah. Are you going to gamble? Yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'll have to talk to you after. I'm not sure what's in store yet. No, I just yeah, found yeah, out. Yeah. I'm like, so excited. And, I, and I've never been, so I have nothing. Yeah, but you guys like to go to nice dinners and stuff. So like, that's why I assume you'll do that. Yeah. And yeah. No, that's cool. I mean, if you're, I don't know, you're going to go to a club. Yeah, I guarantee you will, at least. Yeah. Why? Is she like a club person? I mean, that's what you got to do. I figure she'll cover all the bases. We'll yeah, probably yeah. go to a club for at least one night. Yeah, but I don't know. Is that what you got to do? Yeah. yeah. You think so? I mean, if Maybe you're... like stop by. Like, I don't think we'll make a night out of being at a club, but like after a show or something, stop at a Popeye, club. Popeye, yeah. Hey Martin, leave, mm-hmm. go see a magic show. Maybe like... What? What's the guys, the Chippendale guys? I'm trying to think what else Vegas has to offer. I love how big magic is still out there. Thank like, you. You would have yes. thought magic would just slowly be dying throughout <laughs> the years. Magic is still huge. Magic's sick, dude. In Vegas. Magic is sick. Yeah. But then why isn't there more of it? Like, why aren't there magic theaters around here and be- shit? Because it's hard to be magical. I don't know. There's there's guys, especially by my neighborhood, they walk around doing magic to bars. You who, know, Maddie. Who? There's a guy, like, uh, this guy's like 70, but he's been doing it for years. He just walks around and does magic tricks at uh tables at bars it's kind of a thing it's, there's a couple sh- uh magic bars in chicago now that i think about it not just cards but like magic tricks mm-hmm. like not just scamming with cards right um oh. predominantly cards and they'll you know they'll be the card you chose is like fucking behind your ear is it a dying art no like just people showing up to bars with something what definitely like, like tamale guy or uh magic trick guy like that's i like that mm-hmm. there's yeah. this guy who shows up with meat you what? ever seen him oh yeah yeah Cooked. It? yeah, yeah it was, it's like uh it's like charcuterie almost yes. but like the way he presents it but it's it's kind of obscure meats right yes his name's like sergeant slaughter and <laughs> he uh like he shows up with his little truck and it's like a you know cooler and he comes up and he's just you know he'll just toss you like salami with like some horseradish catches on it. like your table Okay. Yeah, it's good. Do you pay? Do you tip? He gives it out for free, but then, like, obviously, like, if you're like, oh, that's really good. Let me buy some. Oh, you can buy it at the truck. Like samples. Yes. I bought beef jerky off him once. Good. Worth it. How Pretty much? Pretty good. Pretty good. I forget. It was a long time ago. 
I had some liver sausage from him once. Yeah. While I was on the clock working, he was at. He came to the bar. I was at. <laughs> and then there's a guy who always goes around selling hats and shirts. That that's still. A thing. Well, that's your. You, you got to give your genius idea. <laughs> you'll love this, Hannah. Wait, what was this? I'm confident that you'll love this. What? Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. The rack in Wrigley or uh, River North Rack or like the uh, Wrigleyville Rack. Why do I feel like this is either tits or meats? No, no, no. You'll love this. I think you're thinking of someone else. You just put yourself in the tits in a meat box? <laughs> racks. Like you said racks. Oh, no, no. Like, no, <laughs> like, like a hat rack. Like oh. when people go out and they don't have... Oh, yeah, yeah. This is one yeah, of his yeah. best ideas. Pitch it. Somebody well, pitch like, it. So many times you go to a place growing up, like some certain places in Wrigley, like don't allow boots or a certain kind of shoe. So I would just have a guy go up and down the busy streets in Chicago and be like, hey, I'll hold your hat for you because you can't wear one going into this bar. Hey, I got some new, sh I got some nice shoes you can wear. You can rent them for me and I'll hold mm. on to your shoes for after. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's kind of, like, it's kind of bathroom attendant vibes, but mm -hmm. it does huh. help. But Danny's envisioning like, you know, the people outside of Wrigley with like the big shirt poles. Yeah. Like that guy just has hats, but they're all people who's are in the bars. Yeah. That oh they, yes. my God. That's like so the, funny. The guy selling cotton candy. Yes. Wait, one of those things. Yes. Yeah. Well, I yeah. mean, is it like valet pretty much? So you don't have to, well, Bro. do you have to pay? Yeah. I, it's a business. Say you had nice shoes, right? Mm -hmm. But you needed somewhere to put the shoes. Can you just say, hang on to these, but I don't need to rent. Well, why would he be walking around with two pairs of shoes? He brought, because of this moment, he has to go into the bar. Well, normally a person would just wear the shoes he's going into the bar with. He wouldn't be carrying wouldn't be carrying a pair of shoes with him. Wait, so this is kind of like coat check. It's kind of like coat check, but it's also if like... But I offer a service the, as well. I give you yeah. new shoes that you need. Yeah. So like my friend didn't get into uh, Moe's Cantina because he was wearing Jordans. Mm -hmm. Huh. Then this that's where ago. I pull up and I give him a nice pair of Dockers and I hang on to his yes. Jordans till he's out of the bar and we yes. switch back. What if they lose the rentals? I don't know what happens in the bar, but they come out barefoot. Oh, then like, they don't get their shoes back. Oh my. Okay. And I just got some new Jordans that will sell for even more. Yeah. But How? like, what do you mean? They come out like the bar barefoot? Yeah. Yeah. They got in a fight. Someone took their shoes. Someone Zero sympathy. Shoes. As a personal experience. Yeah. What? Like, I mean, how could you shit, by the way, on bathroom attendants when... You are a bathroom attendant with this idea. You're <laughs> no, just outside. I'm not, I'm not forcing anyone to like, I'm not handing them the towel at forcing them to like feel sorry for not paying me. I'm just here if you need me. Well, I mean, if you see someone get denied, I guarantee you, you're not going to be like, ignore it. You're going to be like, hey, I got Sure, but you. they need me at that point. You never need the bathroom the attendant. What hands? I mean, I guess not, but. But like, yeah, if he had, like, if you had halitosis and the bathroom attendant has the, a mint, I you really know, that's why you go this. to the bathroom I, attendant. I'm just. I love it. I it's think it's brilliant. I think you shouldn't shade bathroom attendants. But you like you're not seeing the visual. You're not seeing the vision here. How how high is the rack? I just you're being very surface right now, where it's like picturing Danny in a trench coat in that rack, and he just pulls up and he opens it up and he's like, "Hey, I got I got this here on yeah, this side. I got I Birkenstocks. Yes, got hush puppies. Damn, that's a." I mean, the sizes, I mean. Sizing's tough. Sure. Sizing's tough, guys. Yeah. The way I look at it, though, is like, <clears throat> you know, I probably have, what would you say standard is? Somewhere between, you know, like a pair of 10, 11, 12. True. And then Ten. you just have to deal with it because you're going to want to get in, into the bar more than you care about, like, having a size, a shoe size one too big, you know? Yeah. Sacrifices. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So this is like a bowling alley shoe thing. So you're just thinking of the worst ways to make my business sound. <laughs> I mean, but here's like to make the, this now. This I think is a real business. Is we went to the Bears game last week, like I said. Oh no! And uh, like so many, like you can only bring like little clear bags in. Yeah. There were so many little purses when we were walking through the gates. Did you see that? Mm -hmm. People just abandon the ship. Like no. if you pull up one of those rickshaws, and it's like, hey, and I know there's lockers out there. People are like, hey, you dumb fuck. There's lockers. I understand that. But it's much easier if, like, there's a guy parked out there right out when you walk outside, and he's got all your shit. Yeah, then you're already you're already in line. Could be a long line. Then you have to leave the line to go put your shit in the locker and get back yes, in line. Yes, so exactly. Just like stand right in front of the locker people and just 
get everybody in yeah, line. Yeah, obviously a lot of trust goes into that because then that guy's like, yeah, got yeah. yeah. soldier. You can't even bring like a diaper bag in there. It's ridiculous. No, that should be a bigger shit. warning. Oh wait, I couldn't bring this in. This size purse. No, I think it's all NFL though. No, yeah. no, no. I was at Is it? Taking yeah. Back Sunday. Like, what in the at, same thing? Wait, no, no. I was at Coldplay. And they don't let you bring that in. No, very annoying. So I had to stuff my pockets with like yeah poshes and like. Molly. More poshes mm -hmm. drugs. Yeah. But <laughs> it's taking back Sunday. Um, but uh, th I don't know. That's an idea. I'm sorry. I think it's a great idea and I would totally use it. Doubt you have a size five woman's, which is kids. It's kind of more catered to men, but. Who's like, uh, who's got the best kids size shit? Vans, Uggs, and. American Girl, though. <laughs> I'll never buy your shoes. Vans, Uggs. Vans, except when you get them laced in person, the laces are like adult laces, so I had to like cut them. They're way too long. <clears throat> do you buy shoes online? I rarely do. Only like, see these shoes I have now. I have like, this is my like second, and I have a third pair. I just keep, I'm a creature of habit. I just keep rebuying them. If it fits well, it fits well. The same shoes? But I got a blister, it's fine. I feel like there's cooler shoes available online though, but. I mean, you know, the sizing and shit, seeing if they'll fit. That's that's what nothing's people from worse buying than it. like flopping around in big shoes. Yeah. No. And then like, I'll never return something. I'm like, never. Yeah. Like never. It's it's done. It's a yeah. done deal. It's I'm not going hit. to fucking Kohl's to drop it off at right. that Amazon location. <laughs> that's just not going to happen. No, it's Kohl's. Well, Kohl's is with Sephora now. I'll take it easy. Okay. 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 Show some respect. Yeah. My bad. My bad. That's a big deal, huh? My hair was on fire this week, guys. Yeah, take it easy, everybody. Are you a Sephora or an Ulta girl? I'm an Ulta bitch because yeah. the coupons. Oh, okay. Tom got me an Ulta gift card. Oh, that's nice of him. Also, Sephora is kind of like, I feel judged. Why? They're full face, really like, they're not, they, they're they like professional makeup artists. I don't know. Is it bougier, Sephora? It's like more, ex I feel like it's more expensive and they're judgmental and it. I just panic and get out of there. With Ulta, you could get anything pretty much. Do they do shit like that, <clears throat> like a shitty personal trainer would do? Like, oh, you, you really need a lot of makeup to yeah. like get you to buy more makeup? Yeah, pretty pretty much. And they keep pairing things and then, and then suddenly you're like spending so much money and you get the points, nothing nothing no i've been saving up points there for like five years and no rewards huh no i'm not gonna spend it there's nothing worth it you get it all to yeah coupons wow. the coupons are you sephora or alta dan um if i had to choose i'll go sephora okay okay classy bitch <laughs> that's devil's advocate because i'm classier yeah see um anything else guys would you do molly again <laughs> uh maybe I, I have no plans to do it no one ever does i have no plans no premeditation here no premeditation. it was kind of like you just crossed it off yes done you know it's like all right i'm good mm. good especially now with the fucking scary shit what they're doing yeah Fuck you have that. to definitely be careful we do because i asked them I was like, hey how do you not know they're like oh like don't worry we've been getting it from this guy for years <sighs> like <laughs> god and you know that's like, like that's fucked Next episode, Eddie gets meth bombed. <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, you know, just trust it. It's like the pizza place on the corner. I've been going there for years. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. they're very convincing. Um, once my friend in Miami bought like so much Molly, and it was all brown sugar. Oh, six hundred dollars worth of brown sugar. No way. Was it good at least? Yeah, it was, it was fresh. It seemed like good brown sugar. Like they just packed it in. But so you guys know. Just be careful. Always taste. Be it careful. First. Yeah, yeah, don't don't listen to me. Same. Don't listen to us. Don't like. Don't do it. Hannah, don't do it. Actually, don't do it. Hannah's the only drug expert here. Yeah. So don't listen to her either. Mm -hmm. Actually. Do what you want. Yeah. Safely. Safe. Responsibly. Yeah. All right, then. Thank you, guys. Uh, that's it for this week. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow. Uh, I think I'm having Vin Dog on. Gonna have a conversation nice. about what's going on with him. So uh, tune in tomorrow, and then uh, we'll be back uh, next Wednesday. See you guys.